Hi folks, this is Don Meisner with the North Country Fishing Report. You know, recently somebody sent me a picture and their picture was headlined with the, with their their title saying walleyes eat frogs. Well, a lot of times when we talk about fishing out in the St. Lawrence River or fishing any place for walleyes, the last thing we ever talk about is using frogs for them to eat. I mean, walleyes have different habits than other fish. They don't lay along the shoreline waiting for a frog to hop out of the bank like a muskie does. They're not back in the slow backwaters where largemouth bass are, where there's a lot of frogs and you can use frog baits to really catch largemouth or northern pike that have gone way back in the weeds. Walleyes aren't like that. They're, they're open water. They're, they're, they're light sensitive and they don't act that way. But I'll tell you what, years ago when I used to, now I'm talking years ago, when I used to fish the Deer River, and this was before I even started doing TV shows, I would take live frogs and I go down to these places where I knew there were pools where there were walleyes in it and I'd throw out that live frog and that was how I would catch my walleyes. And I hadn't thought about it in years. Well, then this picture that this person sent me not was of walleyes just recently caught and that he had cleaned. In other words, he filleted them and so forth and he showed the in, inside of their stomachs and they were full of frogs. And then he had some of the frogs that weren't even digested that were laying there beside the fish. And it shows, it shows something, okay? Now, what is it showing? What is it that's important for you to know? I guess not that you need to go out and change your walleye fishing and start using frogs out in the St. Lawrence River because you probably won't catch anything doing that, really. But what, it, what, it, what I'm really trying to tell you is that the diet that fish that becomes part of their maintenance to keep them alive is a lot of time determined by not what they might prefer, but what lives around them in that particular ecosystem. And so a lot of times if walleyes are existing, especially along streams or in lakes where there's a big population of frogs, frogs may become a big part of their diet if it becomes easy for them to to go into those warmer waters or do whatever it is to get those frogs. I found this fascinating because it made me think back again to another report that I just did for you talking about as a child learning as I'm fishing and observing stuff in the water. And when I was a kid, I experimented with baits, with things that I would find around me, things that I'd never used since. But some of those baits that I would use I discovered that the fish ate those baits because they were part of the the very same system I was sharing with those fish in the Genesee River. White grubs, oh my goodness, they would love these little maggoty looking white grubs that you could now and then find under rocks in a certain type of soil. They loved salamanders, especially orange ones. But one of the things I found that they hated they would never, ever, ever strike a toad because they knew that there was poison or something that came out of toads. They didn't really like pollywogs. Even though they loved frogs, they wouldn't hit the pollywogs that I would use nearly as readily. Why is that? I'm thinking, geez, they're the same thing. They're going to grow into a frog. Why won't the fish? But they didn't like them as much. So I guess it's, it's, it's a good thing to know, though, that whatever body of water you go to fish, if you can kind of learn some of the natural foods that exist in that area, it's going to determine more what those fish are most likely going to hit. I'll give you one final thought. Smallmouth bass, for years and years and years up here in this area, when I say this area, I'm talking the St. Lawrence River and Lake Ontario, guides that would take people out smallmouth bass fishing, inevitably the thing they used was live crayfish. Now, since gobies were inadvertently introduced into our water from the ships coming from all over the world, now gobies become so prevalent in the same body of water that things that look and act like gobies appear to be more favored to the fish than some of the foods that they ate before. And so the, the, it's important, to, again, to realize the type of food that lives in the water system that you're fishing. And if you can do that, you can probably select baits and lures that will most mimic what the, what's part of those fish's diet. Until next time, folks, this is Don Meisner with the North Country Fishing Report.